Skysweeper, clearing the air. This is an update on my project from last year, the Skysweeper. Brief outline. So, the problem is that one piece of space trash can whack into a satellite, creating more space trash than a runaway cascade that wipes out all spacecraft and satellites in low Earth orbit. It also renders travel beyond that using conventional craft impractical and inaccessible. This is depicted in the movie Gravity. Even though it's even though Kessler syndrome sounds like a disease, it's really a catastrophic space disaster. My skyscraper system was a low-cost orbital debris cleanup system for small debris, one millimeter to one centimeter in size, over large volumes of space, largely because high volume or high Larger objects have been uh, documented or captured using existing technologies, often expensive ones. So I thought, what about something from the other end of the spectrum? Something that startups, developing countries, or citizen scientists could use in, to avoid such a calamity. So, debris in low Earth orbit are most dangerous because they can block access beyond uh, conventional launch sites. That de debris is moving at 8 kilometers a second. So how do we clean up those large volumes? My examples are inspired by ancient rocket artillery. Here's uh, some examples. There's the fire arrows, firework arrows attached to uh, crossbow bolts or, sim or regular arrows. The Korean Hawacha used in the Imjin War of the 1590s against the Japanese. Typically arrows attached to uh, firework engines all attached to the same fuse and the Renaissance Italian organ gun, basically several musket barrels stacked on top of each other. So early skysweeper design was based on rocket volleys. Now the idea is to discharge simultaneous low power rockets with nets, tethers, or fabric behind them, what I call chutes. They can also be mounted on spacecraft or satellites as a point defense, mostly anticipating an incoming uh, debris field also could be used as a handheld system, like as a line launcher for rescuing sailors or maybe uh, astronauts. So the original design had a really bulky projectile, a standard model rocket engine attached to Paracor, 42 grams. So likewise, the development space was constrained, pun intended. How did I miniaturize with 3D printing? The new system is about uh, 9 millimeters in diameter by 15 millimeters tall, and each one weighs about 0.3 grams, including the parachute, which is comprised of shopping bag and dental floss. I also found launching from a tube, in this case a antique pistol, increased the, the velocity because more pressure builds up and helps it launch with more accuracy. Turns out there is a very useful device for launching projectiles packed with wadding, and I already spoiled for it. So, in this case, the percussion revolver was perhaps the most appropriate of the antique pistols. The Remington 1858 in a 36 naval caliber, roughly the predecessor of modern-day 38 Special. So the percussion cap basically works by the hammer hits the, a bronze button at the end of each cylinder, which creates a spark that ignites normally the gunpowder in there, and in this case, the rocket engine, which is still full of black powder, like uh, this would have been used in the American Civil War, and shoves it out the barrel. This device is sturdy enough for small rock, rocket pressures, because we're essentially talking small firecracker here, and uh, you can load multiple ones, different mixes, different parachute sizes to test in one session, so you don't need to constantly reload and worry about manual uh, artifacts or, or slight differences. So the launch sequence, you tie the chute onto the rocket, load the chamber with fuel, black powder in this case, load it into the chamber, and repeat for other chambers, place the percussion caps last, safety measure, and then discharge it. So rocket ignites, blast out the front, and parachute and all a drag through the barrel. So the improvements, reliable deployment, 
rapid fuel burn, stable launch trajectory, the drawbacks, hard to scale, and also hard to quantify because they didn't really have a chronograph or a ballistic pendulum. The chute itself also was irregular in size. I used plastic uh, bag cut to a, with several stri strips cut to the uh, same dimensions, but stuff still got torn and crumpled as was shoved in and out repeatedly. So I got a chronograph, so hopefully that'll be fi fixed in the future. The tube and chamber launch has advantages, and electronic or optical ignition, preferably with a laser and fiber optic, rather than the old uh, model rocket style electronic ignition, are going to be more reliable because no physical contact is necessary, unlike with, say, a fused percussion cap or a rocket circuit. <laughs> Further optimization requires more precise measurement, so padding optimization and power parachute size, as well as integration of the laser are going to be the next. So we also have a new engine shape. We're improving the integration of all these components and potentially better instruments and maybe use this for a line launcher redesign as well. But that's a story for a different day. So the fundamental system is validated. The shoot size optimization is required. Ignition system is the key to scalability. Here's some of the new engines uh, and some that are 3D printed in PLA. Thank you for your time.